Well, it's just about 11 o'clock on, let me check the day, January 12th, I had suspected as much that we had gone past the 11th, 11th was Monday, today is Tuesday, so it is the 12th. Things get very weird and strange when you have no schedule. There isn't a night time, there isn't a day time, there isn't a bed time, uh, there isn't a, 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 you know, a morning time. It just morphs into one long continuous day until you have a bit of a collapse, a sleep deprivation crash. And you spend most of the day kind of sleeping, but even then, uh, if, uh, when you go to sleep you're still working... Uh, your mind is still go, and you are aware of the dreams. Then there's no real time off. And what happens is that in the dream, currently in the dreams that are that are going on, that uh, they're they they are in some ways new content, but in many ways the same old themes, but they with different responses and different uh, sort of capabilities, if you will, uh, that I never really understood that I had before. And it's, in this, the whole thing is going on in the light of this thing, of this thing called neutral gin, or ne neutral jing, where it is patience and observation that allows you to make your decisions in a manner that is not necessarily beneficial to you, but you remain significantly more calm than you would have been in, in, in any other state. In other words, you re retain your state of meditation, you retain your state of calm, and you retain your state of observation. But at the same time, as you're not standing there frozen, doing nothing, it's just that you respond in a different manner to, to, to a number of situations that are going on. And you become aware of things that, that seem odd. Uh, like one of the dreams I had... There are people who are bothered by other people who trespass on their properties. And do things nece without necessarily thinking, even if they're, even if they're young, they, 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 they don't give uh, other people... They, they'll excuse their own kids from their particular, uh, you know, we'll call it juvenile behavior, but they won't, uh, won't excuse others. And there was this girl who apparently had stolen a horse and then ended up riding off a blind cliff. And she fell and was seriously hurt. And the mother, the uh, mother of another girl who was on the property, who lived there, was upset the girl had been trespassing and, you know, was sort of upset that she had taken the horse, wasn't necessarily concerned that the girl was hurt or anything like that, just that, uh, <laughs> and she was seriously hurt, so I looked, I, I, attended, to the, I attended to the girl, uh, I do have in the dream some healing powers, those are starting to come in, uh, so I was attending to the girl, and I looked at the girl carefully, and realized this was the, the 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 girl's daughter. This was the the the, the uh, mother's daughter. And what happens? I'm aware that in in many case, in some cases, in terms of parallel universes, that a a, a parallel self can exist. Uh, in some manner, that again, this is this is what it occurs within the dream that, that you have two parallel realities intersecting with one. And this was the case here. 
The reason why the girl had been on the property is that she had lived there. And what happened is the mother didn't recognize her own daughter. So it was sort of a, a way of of trying to explain to to the mother that this was her daughter, but she couldn't understand that. She couldn't understand that that was that was her daughter. She just simply saw someone lying there who had taken her horse or, or, or done something that was not necessarily proper in terms of taking property that wasn't that didn't belong to her. And the thing is, this this is in many cases what goes on in life is that, that people who have property, who own things and have a sense of self, have no sense of other people. And they have an expectation that their needs and wants will be served by others. And they don't care to take care of themselves. They, they, they well, they basically are what we call freeloaders. And this is what we see a lot in today's society. In today's society, we see a lot of freeloaders. We see a lot of people who want and expect uh, a lot of things, not something for no nothing, but a lot of things for nothing. They want it all for free. They expect somebody else to pay the bill. I mean, Quebec uh, has a lot of stuff. They have a free university, free healthcare system. But in order to pay for all that stuff, they uh, take more money than they should from the other provinces. They, 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 in order to stay with part of Canada, uh, as part of the deal goes is that the rest of Canada has to pay them a fee to be part of Canada. And, and the fee is close to $5 billion right now because we, other people, uh, pay for the health care, other people pay for the, the free education, and so on and so forth. In other words, Quebec, as an entire province, are freeloaders. And yet, they expect this service to be rendered unto them, all this free stuff to happen. And they don't consider anyone else but themselves. And this is, this is sort of the, I guess you call the epitome or, or, or the reality of a social welfare state that it, it, it breeds a degree of selfishness that there is an expectation that somebody else is going to take care of your wants and needs there is no consideration that you are going to get up and take care of whatever you can yourself the government's going to do this the government's going to do that it, it's always want take want take want take without ever considering giving back. And unfortunately, the United States is headed, headed in this direction. And the thing is, the, the Republicans, because they are on the religious right, but, but so are the left. The left are just as religious, just as sanctimonious as the right are. Their beliefs are the same, are in many ways the same. They don't have proof or anything. They believe in everything. And their beliefs are absolutely... It is, it, when you look at it, you can't believe people would be this... have this level of... of stupidity. But as Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky has pointed out in his writings, classifying the left as idiots and possessed, this is exactly what we see. We see something that is not logical, something that is demonic. The demonic is not, these aren't beasts in terms of like animals. These are people who have become completely wild, completely, completely feral. The sense of humanity that was initially there, may have been there a, a while ago, is completely gone. And it's not going to come back anytime soon because they're so used to the condition that they don't understand what it is to be. Well, humane. If you're always expecting someone to take care of you, whatever you want and desire, uh, you, you know, your, your wants and your needs, and beyond that, 
uh, then you're never going to consider somebody else's effort that was put in to bring you whatever you wanted to need. You simply take, 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 take. And your sense of humanity will disappear with because you will demand the service if it's not brought to you promptly. And this is the nature that a large chunk of the world, well, I'm not saying that, the European world is going into. And they and, and the Republicans will say, well, this is the fault of the Chinese. This is the fault of the immigra immigrants. And so they blame a number of different groups. That the fault. But they never blame themselves. They never blame themselves for being sanctimonious. They, they, they never uh, blame themselves for being self-righteous. And the thing is, the right is as demonically possessed, and this can be dis this can be uh, uh, shown throughout history, as the left is. And so what happens? They fight back and forth, each being drawn deeper and deeper into darkness, never seeing that the hand, the hidden hand, the puppet master, are demonic forces. They don't see this. It's not. It's not part of their visible scope, and yet they're being deceived again, and again, and again. And this says in the Bible, "What happens to the dam? They go from deception to deception, with each deception being worse than the last." What do we see in, in the world today? Deception. We go from deception to deception, with each deception being worse than the last. We are in a demonic world. And we're there because, in many cases, we're chasing after things that we want. We don't necessarily need them, we want them. This is our part of our desires. And the thing is, is that that's the way in many cases we want it. We want to be heard. We want to be our, our, our ideas to be the top thing. So what happens is we try to create this world that loves us, that, that, that is in love with us, that our ideas are the best idea, that we are the heroes of the world, that we are the saviors of the world. And yet we do very little to really earn that title. To, to, we do very little to, to have the understanding brought to a reality that we are, we should be more humble than we are, we should be more self-sacrificing than we are. And this is what leads us to what we see today. I wasn't supposed to be up working this late, but it's uh, 3.20 in the morning, and once again, the deep dive got me. Uh, I was doing a research, doing a research project on, on virology, <clears throat> and uh, I got partway through it. I didn't finish the whole thing. I got enough done that I'm satisfied with, I'm satisfied where I am, and now I just have to do a little bit more. Uh, I have to uh, move some of the data from one one device to another, uh, so I can see the data a little bit better. Excuse me a moment. But the thing is, what, what, what strikes me is the data that I'm looking at in virology is so disjointed, so out of place. There is no way that the epidemiologists who are just look, simply looking at the data can make heads or tails of things because you don't know what the data is or how, how to properly weigh it. And they make, they, a lot of times they're just making stuff up. So what you're seeing in most of these mathematical models, this includes the International Planet uh, Panel on Climate Change. You're seeing a hallucin you're seeing a mathematical hallucination. You're not seeing something that's real, and this is what causes a large chunk of the problem. Before the you know they're talking about 
the, uh, you know, the great fart panic and the number of cases uh, that pe that, pe that involve people. You know how many cases there, are. but they're not real numbers. They're 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 projected numbers. They're anticipated numbers, but they're not real. They're, 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 these are computer projections, the computer hallucination. So they're working on things that that aren't even real that that, that that will prove and have proven to be absolutely false. And it's it, it's it's mind-boggling to see how. Well, well, it's mind-boggling because you would think people wouldn't do things like this. I'm going to call the morons and idiots because if they're not morons, and idiots, morons and idiots don't know what they're doing. So you can't really blame, okay, while well, they didn't know. If you ha say you're somewhat intelligent or they're somewhat intelligent and you could have known, that's criminal ne That's criminal negligence. There's culpability there. There is uh, the ability to lay criminal charges because they're hurting people. They're, they, 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 they're, 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 if they know what they're doing, they're deliberately hurting people. But they don't even they, they they don't want to even even hear anything to the contrary. That's that's not open minded. That's not that's that's being a moron. That's being an idiot because you consider nothing else as real. But it's gone back to the thing I talk about gnosis, about how we understand things and how we understand knowledge and how we look at knowledge often provides our limitations to our understanding of knowledge. And this comes from, from in, in several ways, a dream that I had. Not really, no, not a dream. This was actually... Uh, one of the summers, I have a place up north. And on the, uh, uh, the, the grounds where we have this tiny little Greek village, there is... A farmer who takes care of the fields and farm the property for us, and he they uh, raise uh, sheep and goats and stuff like that. They have herd animals, so they say, "Okay, close the gate, go wing for a package from 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 uh, uh, at the time Walmart was being delivered." So I was sitting outside waiting for it, and um, I was outside the gate. I made sure to close the gate so the animals didn't get out. And the animals were there back there, you know, munching away. They came over to see who I was and, you know, what I was doing and so on and so forth. <laughs> Just briefly. And then, then, then they uh, wandered back towards the, 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 the sort of the, the, the path where the, that you walk up to the, the to the, the, the mm, sorry, the path on the road that you walk up to the village where all the different, uh, Housing is the the, the the different places, and I have my place in that complex. And we can call it a little town or a little city. It should be a little town because it's so small. And I hear one sheep go off. I was sitting with my back to them. I hear one sheep go off to the right. He disappears for about 10, 15 minutes. I don't don't hear him again for, for a while. He comes back and starts, in my understanding, talking to the other to the other sheep. As a matter of fact, arguing with them. The sheep eventually break up into factions as the argument continues. But more and more sheep end up following. And going on to the side of uh, the 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 sheep that initially started the thing, you know the argument. So this sheep was winning the argument. What was the argument? He had found a way to get out of the uh, the way to get around the gate. In the woods, there was a fence, and by the fence there was a stone that they could stand on and hop over the fence, and go out to another field that they like where where they liked the grass better. And it took them about 15 to 20 minutes of arguing for eventually all the sheep to go with the one main sheep over to the rock, hop over the rock, 
over the fence, and then out onto the road where they uh, headed on up to uh, the neighbor's house, the neighbor's yard, or especially a field where there was grass that they liked better. And then the farmer came by and asked me, well, where's the sheep? Well, I don't know. I said they went off to uh, the right. I said that, that, you know there is a hole in the fence there. That, you know, there's a rock that can stand where they can get over the fence. So he said, I didn't know that. Well, one of the sheep found it and eventually convinced all the other sheep to uh, go with them. And to give you an idea of what the sheep look like, uh, if you ever seen Shaun the Sheep, well, they all have that feature of Shaun the Sheep where a black head and, and a white, and a, and a white uh, furry body, you know, in terms of their coat. But this is a, the one Shaun the Sheep was able to convince everybody else um, to go with them, and they went over to the other field. So he took his, he went, uh, he went, he went, took his truck with a trailer. Uh, <laughs> empty going initially and he found all the sheep down the road at the neighbor's at the neighbor's place rounded them all up and bit by bit and got them back in the car and, they, and you see the sheep come the sheep come by in the trailer and looking at me as if they were waving hello <laughs> but the thing is, is that the, the argument that we see on, on on the internet a lot of times about between the arguments between those who are the, uh, who support support the chronic gas and those who are so-called anti-maskers, the anti-maskers use up a thing that they call oh they're sheeple. Well, the thing is, if you look into the background, a large chunk of these people who are anti-maskers, they're sheeple as well because they're simply following another 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 master. They're, they're not they're not independent thinkers. Because they haven't spent the time going into the virology to really understand what's going on. The only argument that goes on with chronic gas is within, micro, is, is within microbiology uh, and virology. And ultimately, because these things are what we call macro, macro molecules, it's macromolecular physics. That's where you go back. The, the final end point of all this is, is uh, macromolecular physics. And because I'm in quantum physics... That's within my area. So um, these are things I do drift into. These are things I do uh, have an understanding of. Where most scientists work on data, I work on mechanism. How does the thing work? The data is secondary. I want to know what the mechanism is. And that takes a lot longer. It takes a lot longer to sit down and work out the mechanism than it does to uh, sit down and work out the data. Because the data can be wrong. How you, why you get your data really does indeed matter. How you get your data does matter. Because different, measure, different measurements and different, consider, let's say, different considerations give you different particular points of view. And this is not brought out by, or even understood by the data scientists who claim themselves to be epidemiologists. These are the top scientists and doctors. But they will never, because of their, their low capacity in terms of where they are on the scale of gnosis, they're on the lowest level, they will never admit that they're wrong. And this is where we stand with lockdowns and, you know, people being arrested because they're not wearing a mask or different things like that. We're back in a time where the doctors, the top doctors, are a lot like Joseph Mengele. This is what happened in Ukraine when 10 million people died. This is what happened in Cam in Cambodia on the, the Khmer Rouge, Paul Pot. This is when, again, they had 10 million deaths because they had whole rice fields filled with bleached bones. And it's because they, co they couldn't keep all these people alive. They uh, said, oh, no, don't worry, we know what we're doing. And as, they, as, as the scientists failed, they executed them. And along with other doctors and other, you know, different people they, they didn't like. And so as the purge, which we see now um, Nancy Pelosi talking about with the Lincoln Project, and the same thing with all, with all the other Democrats, uh, this is the same purge that started off uh, under Stalin, under Pol Pot. Uh, this is what Hitler did. And so, they're, you know, they're, they're, in terms of their, their history and where their place is in history, they're keeping good company with Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, you know, a number of these mass murderers. 
And the other thing is, one needs to con be concerned is that what's going to happen is who is going to be added to the list of the purge list. And it's bizarre to be talking about it now because this is, you know, uh, we haven't heard of these purges. Uh, the last purge was uh, basically, I think, uh, uh, well, well, the Khmer Rouge was late. The Khmer Rouge purge, uh, what we saw in Cambodia, was uh, uh, between 1970 and 1980. So that was the latest, that was the last one. So we basically, in 20, 40 years, we haven't had a, a purge, unless, of course, you talk about the Rwandan genocide, because th this is where it is. This, this is this is where we're at historically. We're at the beginning of it, but we're there. Uh, and th this should concern people, but in many cases it doesn't. People don't necessarily understand or make the connection to history, uh, to what's actually going on. Anyways, I've got some more work to finish up. I've got uh, some uh, nice... Uh, iced tea here. It's not the really ice; it's room temperature. But the, this type of tea is good like that. And uh, I'm gonna finish up uh, working on uh, my YouTube stroll. I'm off track right now. <laughs>